It is Giving Tuesday, that's right. Today is really the most critical day for supporters like you to be able to make a difference. Switch for Good is only possible, period, through the generosity of dedicated people like you. And we have some really exciting news. Uh, I'd love to introduce, as you can see here on the screen, Miyoko. Miyoko is kind of like one of those people that just needs the first name, sort of like Beyonce. You all know who she is, <laughs> chef, author, uh, entrepreneur, all around really vegan badass, and philanthropist, because this is what's so exciting. Miyoko's Creamery is matching your gift today, all the way from today actually to December 31st, so your gift is going to be double dollar for dollar. That is pretty amazing. So welcome, Miyoko. Thanks for joining me on Giving Tuesday. Hi, Dotsie. Nice to, to connect with you again. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, I, love, uh, I love the pictures in your background, and I'm feeling like one of them uh, with the goats is from your sanctuary, Rancho Compassion. Yeah, Rufus and Reggie. Ah, uh, I've seen yeah. that picture before. I love it. So, you know, Miyoko, we have a lot of people ask us why dairy is our entry point, right? There really isn't any other organization in this movement, uh, activist organization, doing exactly the, the, the work that we're doing. And I think it's important for people to really understand and get the reasons. And there are many, but the three of them kind of rise to the top for me. The first one, and these are in no particular order because they're all really important. But the first one is, uh, dairy is making the most people sick, uh, uncomfortable, and unab unable to breathe due to that most folks, 70% of them in the world, are intolerant to dairy foods. They can't digest them properly. Uh, and, and, and the symptoms, the results of that are itchy skin conditions, uh, stomach bloating and cramping, uh, exacerbating asthma, uh, it, it, it's really from head to toe that people well, how have about, How about breast cancer? Well, yes, that right. It, of course, mm -hmm. many other reasons besides yeah. just the lactose intolerance, but why the intolerance makes me mm -hmm. particularly crazy, and I think you too, is because BIPOC people suffer much more than white people to the tune of 75 to 90%. Dairy will give all of us prostate cancer colorectal cancer, breast cancer. Right. But it really, dairy is literally a racist act uh, in, in the yes. way it makes people of color sick. Um, uh, I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's so maddening. And obviously you and I feel like it's really important to focus on transitioning people away from all animal-based foods, clearly. Um, but it's Switch for Good, we believe that the low-hanging fruit here is the way to change the people fastest. Um, you know, it, it, no one ever said, you know, I took the, the chicken out of my diet or I took the fish out of my diet and I feel so much better, uh, even though there are a lot of ill effects to, to eating animal meats. Uh, but dairy really is the means to the way in for people to go plant-based because they feel so much better immediately after they give it up. I mean, we get emails, people 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, and they're like, my life has completely changed. I feel so extraordinary getting rid of the dairy. Yes, yeah, and it's really, really too bad that dairy, especially inexpensive, cheap dairy, is being fed to those who are most allergic. If you just think about it, American dairies are making, producing more dairy than they can actually sell. What happens then is that the American government buys that excess dairy, that de excess milk, and they convert it into cheap processed cheese to the tune of an excess of 1.4 billion piles of processed cheese stockpiled in this country. Now, the American government obviously has to get rid of it. So what they end up doing it is that they force it through the school lunch program, uh, food stamps, and you know, community supporting low-income communities with this product to bring... Uh, supposedly healthy food to them, what, what that's doing is it is actually targeting those who can afford to consume dairy the least right. from a health perspective, sickening them more and more, which is why we're seeing rates of obesity, diabetes um, among people of color that traditionally, if you go back to their traditional communities, did not consume dairy, were not obese, did not have diabetes, did not have all these conditions that are 
almost directly linked to dairy. Yeah, that's really well said. And, uh, you know, that kind of brings me to the second point in that uh, dairy sales are dropping, especially in the fluid milk category, right? But we have, uh, as those drop, in that category, we have this excess, and so the government mostly is making it into cheese. Um, they're making it into cheese, and then they're yeah. forcing it on lower income communities. Um, and making it the sickest. It's making them the sickest. Yeah. Uh, we really feel like the first domino to fall in this kind of breadth of animal ag, if you will, is dairy. Uh, since we have this, this inroad, this spot where we know that some of their uh, in some of their categories, it's following, falling. It gives us the momentum, right? So the next step is obviously, and you guys, you guys are working on this, you know, every day is getting Miyoko's cheese in the dairy cases at major grocery chains because that's exactly when we saw fluid milk sales drop is when we got the almond milk and the soy milk and the coconut milk that's in right. that dairy. So that that's right. And you guys are the ones that can compete because back when I was a cheese eater, I mean, and you have a great story about how you really got into this, which I'd love for you to tell um, your husband, entertaining your husband's clients. And you were making some vegan cheeses. And then he just one day said, nope, that's enough. I want to be able to have the, the dairy cheese there. And well, then after that is, I'll let you tell the story, but it's so great about what the client said after they left the party. Yeah, well, yes. Actually, what happened was I was making, giving all these parties, entertaining his clients, without any sort of cheese at all. So I was making, you know, fancy little vegan appetizers and so on. Finally, he said, I'm sick of it. My clients expect a cheese platter. And he went out and bought a bunch of cheese. I got really upset. And the following <laughs> year, I went ahead and I started experimenting with cheese. And I came up with all these beautiful uh, cheese wheels and I put them out there. And so this is, I don't, I don't know if this is like 15, 20, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years ago. It was a long time ago, maybe 15. And this, at the, you know, at the end of the evening, some client came up to me and said, oh my God, that cheese platter was spectacular. I really love the lemon peppercorn one. Which artisan creamery did you get that from? And of course that was one I had made, one of the ones that I had made. Um, and that's when I knew, that was the first time I felt like, oh my God, maybe these vegan cheeses that I'm playing around with have legs and I should really start experimenting with it. But you know, something that you said earlier that I want to go back to Dotsie is, um, in the fluid milk category, uh, we know the statistics, 15% of the fluid milk category now is taken up by dairy alternatives, so almond milk, soy milk, et cetera. So that's the part of plant-based foods that we've actually made the most inroads. So in terms of plant-based meat, for example, uh, even though Impossible and, and Beyond have done such an amazing job, as other companies have, they represent still less than 1% of total market share. And so when you talk about where we're really succeeding, you're absolutely right, it's in plant-based uh, milk. Now, if you think about cheese, dairy cheese, dairy cheese is concentrated milk. So one pound of cheese is made from about a gallon of milk. And so if you think about that, it takes so much more milk to make cheese. We have to think about it, we have to do the same thing that in the fluid milk category, plant-based milks have been able to do. We need to have the same sort of inroads and take away that market share in those categories as well, because it represents so much more milk. Mm -hmm. So if you think, you know, so if we, uh, there's 128 ounces, I can't do math right now. 16 ounces is one pound, 128, I don't know, what is that, Six thirty 30, eight times? Okay, whatever it is. Let's go with so, eight. If we can take up 15% market share of the cheese category, replacing them with plant-based cheeses, not just our company, but all the others as well, that actually represents eight times more milk that's being replaced, if I did my math right. Does that make sense? That's because pretty extraordinary, yes. concentrated milk. Right. And that's why it's right. so important to support plant-based cheese companies, not just us, yeah. but all the other players, You know, whether it's Daya, Follow Your Heart, uh, some, a lot of the little guys, uh, you know, other artisan makers like Treeline. I mean, they're all, um, gosh, I, I just feel like there's a plant-based cheese explosion right now. There are artisan yeah. cheese makers in every community across the country now. There are literally, I think, probably hundreds of them at this point, which is so exciting. 
Um, and, and, you know, if we just support these companies and share, especially during the holidays, support your artisan vegan cheesemakers, yeah. take them to holiday parties, have the same experience I had when I first started introducing them years ago at my husband's parties. Um, and then we can get those uh, those omnivores, those flexitarians, the people that are still consuming dairy away from dairy, um, open up their eyes during the holiday season. It's the perfect time. I know we're not supposed to be going to parties, but gift them, send them in the mail, drop off a little goodie box at you know some friend's house that you would have gone to a party with uh, at, at, in different times and try to get them off of dairy. Um, yeah. yeah, I gotta tell you about I think it was six, six years ago, uh, when your cheeses were not in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, which they are now plentiful, uh, a plentiful amount of them. Uh, I went home for Christmas and shipped on dry ice, like seven or eight of your wonderful cheese wheels to get, so I could get my family to transition and it worked. And now I don't have to ship anything anywhere because I go to the local grocery stores in Louisville, Kentucky, and all of your cheese is there. So I save uh, $100 in shipping of what yeah. I was doing <laughs> back then. So people can yeah. get it uh, really, uh, really anywhere. How many uh, cities or counties, however you uh, track it, uh, is your cheese around in the United States? Well, we're in, we're in all 50 states. Uh, we're also in Canada. We're in about, in the United States, we're in about 20,000 stores. And then another, I don't know, several thousand in Canada. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we we're also in uh, South Africa, a little bit in Hong Kong and uh, uh, Southeast Asia as well, too. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe 30,000 stores total. All right. So, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so it was certainly in the United States and Canada, um, people have access to it. Um, so where does all this dairy come from? I think this, this third reason is, is the one well, that, yeah. It's obvious. It comes from happy cows. It does. It comes from huggable, happy, lovable cows, and they're also happy. Who just give uh, their milk generously, their magical yes. milk machines. Yes, and you must milk them or they will explode, don't you they know? They will. They will. <laughs> oh, so totally. You're right, of course. Um, it is the third reason, and that is just, uh, to, to put it frankly, suffering. Um, dairy cows live a tortured life. Uh, they suffer for years longer as opposed to um, a uh, chicken or a pig, and you and I do not eat chickens or pigs either, but um, the typical slaughter time for a chicken is seven weeks. For a dairy cow, it's four and a half to five years. That's 265 weeks, if I have my math right, of pretty much the most horrible suffering any mother could imagine. And uh, we feel at Switch for Good like it's really important to not just look at suffering from an individual numbers perspective, but from a length of suffering perspective. And for a dairy cow, it's truly unimaginable how much she suffers. Uh, well, you know, it, part of what really bothers me is the myth that we continue to perpetuate about the happy cow. And so many people, I mean, I myself, you know, even when I was uh, an early vegan years ago, 25, 30 years ago, would see the happy cows grazing in the grass in California and just think they were truly, it's like, well, it just gives this benign perspective mm -hmm. of dairy. Mm -hmm. And it is that absolute, the, the irony that it's just the opposite. The fact is that we've yeah. done, the dairy industry has done such a great job of selling that myth of happy cows when it's yeah. just the yeah. opposite. And yeah. the dairy industry is even unaware. They actually, some people actually think they're a different species from beef cows. So mm -hmm. for example, on, a, on a, what's called a cow-calf operation where they raise beef, the babies are never separated from their mothers. They grow up together. Yeah. And why is that? Because the baby does, the calf does, uh, the, they don't need the mother's milk. On a dairy operation, the calf is immediately separated from the mother, and that's one of the ways the mothers, the, the cows suffer. They suffer the loss of their, of their young. They suffer the loss immediately, and you can hear their plaintive cries mm -hmm. as they call for their babies, and the babies are raised in isolation in these, in these horrible conditions, usually, in a little calf hut, mm -hmm. a little hutch, they yeah. call it. 
and they're raised in, can you imagine a human baby just being whisked away and they're just raised in some chamber by themselves? I mean, can you imagine the suffering that a mother would feel and the baby would feel? But that's what dairy cows have to repeat for four mm -hmm. to six years before their slaughter. Whereas on a beef operation, they're not separated because we don't need the mother's milk. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've just been fed this myth of happy dairy cows. I mean, there are dairies that, that have advertising of, of, of cows dancing with, you know, yeah. ballerina outfits. I mean, it's... Mm. Yeah. The, one of the most harrowing story, uh, stories that really takes you on a journey through um, kind of a, a dairy farm and what it might be like to be a dairy cow on the... Uh, Switch for Good podcast. We had Jessica Strathdee on. I really encourage everyone to go find that episode. She's a former um, dairy worker. Uh, she worked uh, in a dairy in New Zealand for four years. So she saw quite literally everything. Uh, and uh, I've had a few people say to me um, that, that listening to that episode was more effective for them in truly understanding the journey of a dairy cow uh, way more than any like horrible undercover video they, they, they've ever seen. Uh, so if, if you're truly curious about the day-to-day, -day, uh, Jessica's episode is... Uh, is, is very eye-opening. There are, there are two things in that uh, video. I mean, in that, what is it is video too. You can watch it on YouTube. But in that, in that podcast episode that I learned that I didn't know, and this is literally what I do with my life, fighting against this industry. Uh, so yeah, so tune into that. Miyoko, what's your personal reason, uh, you know, that's really deep within your heart uh, for wanting to see the end of dairy and kind of this dawning of a new world where everyone eats uh, cheese that's made from plants? Well, her name is Angel, and there was another one named Erica. Uh, but basically, it's that all of these animals, all these beautiful cows, all these dairy cows are, they're just loving, they're just like giant loving puppy dogs. Um, and they have a heart, they have a mind, they have a will of their own. They don't live for us, they live for themselves. And yeah. enslaving them is not in the best interest of them, but also it's not in the best interest of us as humans if we wanna be humane. Yeah. If we wanna be our best selves, enslaving another species and making them suffer, and then when we're, we've used up their milk and we send them off to slaughter, that is not how we become our best selves. Yeah, you are making great strides uh, toward the uh, industry ending and a whole new world where we do just eat cheese made from plants. And this year was pretty exciting for Miyoko's, I think, like a week or something before the pandemic, you guys launched in, uh, in New York City, your uh, shreds and slices. It's ooey gooey, stretchy, super melty, amazing grilled cheese style cheese. Uh, what what's uh, what's the secret in this new line? Now not so new, but in the in the line mm -hmm. from this year that came out in the in the stretch and the, the slices. Sure. Are, we're actually revamping it, and making it better. And oh, we, I we, thought it's pretty darn yeah. good, girl. <laughs> no, the, this is better actually. Um, okay. So, I mean, part of the secret is that we really wanted to, we make cheese the old fashioned way, like cheese makers do. And we believe in honoring the whole food. In other words, not just, there's one way to do it. You can make something that tastes like cheese. It's made out of oil, starch, and natural flavors. Yeah. We wanted to create the flavors naturally through fermentation, just like in the cheese making process. So we have a proprietary milk that we make that gets fermented with dairy cultures. Um, and then it follows uh, traditional cheese making techniques thereafter. Um, so the what's on the marketplace today, uh, we weren't quite at that, um, We were I would call that version 1.0. We're launching a 2.0 okay. mm -hmm. that has the actual natural flavors taken out where we've completely um, been able to achieve, uh, you know, um, close to a dairy nutrition profile. Um, so it's 70 calories per ounce as opposed to dairy is 120 calories per mm -hmm. ounce. Awesome. Um, and then calorie for calorie, it's very close to dairy. Not quite, but very close. Uh, a protein is very close to dairy. That's what I meant to say. Uh, it has 10% of your calcium. Uh, it also has vitamin B12 and, and some other uh, minerals as well. And we achieve that through, through uh, 
various seeds. Uh, we take, make a milk out of seeds, uh, including sunflower seeds and hemp seeds uh, and legumes, garbanzo beans, uh, fava beans. Um, and then we ferment it and then we turn it into cheese. And we've been able to achieve the flavors of pepper jack and cheddar without opening up a bottle of natural flavoring and dumping it in there. It's simply from the ingredients themselves. So I'm really excited about version 2.0 that's going to be launching in early spring. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I, I tell you, I still like that. A couple stuff, months away, yeah. I'm gonna get that too. Okay. So in case you guys forgot, it's Giving Tuesday. And just to remind you, Miyoko's Creamery is matching your gift, your donation, dollar for dollar. So please, please go to switchforgood.org. That's switch, the number four good.org to make a gift. And if you want to learn about our big wins this past year, just click on impact. Uh, you know, at Switch, our, our primary goal really has always been to help people live better and do more. And uh, it's ex I'm pretty excited to announce that next spring, when your cheeses are going to launch, we are going to launch into uh, the scientific research sphere to become the first to complete scientific research on performance as it relates to animal-based food versus plant-based food. And we have research coming out uh, in three areas. One is on inflammation. Another is on hormones. So you might find out that soy is not giving you man boobs. It just might be the cow's milk. Uh, and also in the field of nutrigenomics. This year also was pretty special for us. Uh, it was supposed to be an Olympic year. Olympic year is gonna be next year. Uh, but we went ahead and launched uh, three really exciting PSAs on NBC that played all summer long with some of the world's top athletes all telling the world that they don't need dairy to win medals and become champions. And uh, 30 million people uh, saw these, ad, these ads on NBC and almost 1 million people took a, direct, uh, took a direct action on the Switch for Good website towards ditching dairy. Now, one of those athletes in our PSAs was Olympic gold medalist David Verber, who's a track and field 400 meter runner. And we are gonna see him next year in the Tokyo Olympic Games. And uh, recently, Mioka, you just placed David front and center of your new uh, Cheese of Champions campaign, which is so right. exciting. So, yep. so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, why does Mioka's Creamery think that it's important to use athletes um, and partner with athletes? Well, we want to show that plant-based foods can be a healthful and delicious part of, a plant, of, of an athlete's diet. Um, especially if, you know, if you're focusing on plant-based foods that are made from whole foods. So we felt that, you know, just an, an image sells, uh, speaks of, what is it, what's the expression? A picture tells worth a thousand, thousand yeah. what, whatever. A thousand we, words, yeah. Yes, yeah, something <laughs> like that. Um, and, and so that's, that was really the point, is that we want to show that athletes, um, it, it's, it, it's not like a protein shake that you're taking for performance, but athletes also eat real food and they wanna eat real food that's clean, made out of clean ingredients, um, and that has some nutrition. And also athletes like to indulge as well too. It's okay for an athlete to indulge every now and then if you're eating from um, a selection of foods that are health supporting. And so we wanted to provide that image that, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that think that aren't vegan, who think that vegan food is all junk food because that's what they see selling the vegan donuts and the and the vegan yeah. whatever you know the the highly processed vegan foods that are out there i think we're one of the the less processed you know we, we try to make our foods as wholesome as possible from cleaner ingredients and so we wanted to put that message out there that there is an alternative there uh, you know plant-based foods um packaged foods can be a part of a healthy diet um, but, you know, you have to make sure you're choosing the right ones. Yes, I love your innovation and in, in your, in your striving to keep pushing forward, pushing forward for, for even, even more healthy options. We know that right. uh, you told me that, you know, coconut oil melts amazing, right? So you could just put, just do that with your, with your slices, but it's not the most healthy. So you guys are, are pushing the envelope, like you mentioned, to bring in uh, sunflower seeds and the fava beans to make it delicious and healthy, which right. is- And eventually, you know, we want to get oil out of our products. We have, uh, I believe, seven products that have no oil in them um, to begin with, and they're just, you know, whole cashews, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're also looking for functionality. So you have to walk a tightrope 
you know, what we're trying to do right now is figure out how can we harness the oil that's inherent in the nut yeah. or the seed and get it to function as if it were extracted. So, you know, we are working, in, um, uh, we're working hard to figure out how to do that. And one of these days we're gonna figure it out. Uh, so we'll, there'll be a, we're gonna launch the 2.0 that, that's cleaner than the 1.0. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna launch the 3.0 and we're just gonna keep working until we develop the products that we feel are 100% where we want, you know, aligned with our principles. Yeah, there's so I, I'm so hopeful. It's such a it's such a hopeful future. Uh, so, well, today really is the most critical day for all of our supporters. So, Miyoko, thank you so much for matching these donors dollar for dollar up until December 31st. It's it's just we're so grateful for. I'm so grateful for our friendship and 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 grateful for the friendship of Miyoko's creamy and creamery and switch for good. And uh, thanks for taking some time. I, I love you, sister. I appreciate everything that you do. Thanks for being a, you're a real warrior for justice and you're a leader and a champion for animals. And uh, we just appreciate you. So happy Giving Tuesday, well, likewise, everyone. Dotsie. <laughs> yep. Right. Well, happy Giving Tuesday, everyone. All right. Thank you, Dotsie, for everything you do. You're welcome. All right. Switchforgood.org. And you can uh, be matched dollar for dollar by... Beyonce. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bianco. Bye-bye.